In an age when solemn songs were sung from the clifftops, a meteorite once fell into the chasm. Out of the depths of the boundless night sky above, the iron meteorite plummeted to the ground, turning the earth to powdered glaze on impact. Though human life is fleeting, Rex Lapis personally ordered the Milleth to rush to the defense of the mines. As the abyss flooded forth, the Milleth escorted countless civilians to safety. Miners tell tales of a small number of troops from the rear guard who remained in the chasm together with the nameless Yaksha. They fought courageously until they too made the ultimate sacrifice among the jagged rocks. Hey guys, I'm Clementine and I'm back with another installment of Genshin Impact Lore and Interesting Things series. In this episode, we're going to be explaining the story behind the tenacity of the Milleth artifact set. When the Milleth was first founded, Liyue was still a savage and dangerous place. The elders of towns, villages, and tribes would pledge oaths of allegiance with a golden cup. As a show of loyalty to Rex Lapis and duty to their countrymen, they selected valiant soldiers from all regions. These soldiers became known as the Milleth. 500 years ago, on one evening, a meteorite once fell into the chasm plummeting down to the ground, turning the earth to powdered glaze on impact. As the abyss flooded forth, the Milleth escorted countless civilians to safety. In the course of fighting side by side with the Yaksha, the mortal soldiers could not escape being contaminated by karma or harmed during the slaughtering. To avoid being consumed by darkness of constant killing, the Milleth soldiers used a timepiece to silently mark the passage of time during each battle. They fixed a unified marching pace and schedule so that one squadron of soldiers would take the battlefield as the one before them retreated. This cycle of advance and retreat continued all the way to the depths of the chasm, together with the nameless Yaksha. Before the large meteorite fell into the chasm, the soldiers from the rear guard drank from a golden cup. It was a final toast to the benevolent and majestic lord of Jeyo. This golden cup is a sign of allegiance of all elders from towns, villages, and tribes that would pledge themselves to the lord of Jeyo. Shortly after that, a group of Milleth soldiers together with the nameless Yaksha fell in battle, while all the civilians fled to Liyue Harbor to be protected by the Lord of Jeyo. The nameless Yaksha disappeared without a trace and returned to a free existence amongst the clouds, meaning that the nameless Yaksha has found peace and will now rest forever. As for the general and his men who left their helmets on the field, they rest there in peace forevermore, and their legend continues to evolve with the flow of time. Now you are all wondering, what happened next? A hundred years later, the timepiece used by the Milleth soldiers was unearthed by a miner. Its bronze surface sparkled in the bright starlight. Urban legends tell of a collector of curious wearing black robes who roamed the market streets buying up Orichalcius time dials and paying a generous sum for each one. Some sellers queried him, curious to know what his reasons were, but he deftly deflected all their questions with an array of excuses and other verbal tricks. As for what this individual's true motive was, perhaps only the unyielding forward march of time can finally deliver a satisfying explanation. As more centuries passed, eventually, the people of Liyue would tell tales of an era of catastrophe and a nameless Yaksha. Tales of how heroes from disparate heritages and different lands united under a single banner against the abyss. Inevitably, the tale would touch upon the cup, and how the blood of those that were before remained clear and spotless as the day it was peeled. Let us then dig deeper into more of the Milleth's origin and its real-life connections. Now, the term Milleth is derived from the Latin word Mille, which means thousand, and Greek word Lithos, which means stone. Given that they served the Lord of Geo, 
and uses strength in numbers. This is probably why they are named as Milleveth. Now in game, most Milleveth guards use either White Tassel or Halberd which are polearms that are common in the region of Liwe. This is different with the knights in Mondstadt because for the people of Mondstadt, a polearm is seen as betrayal or revolt which is why few Mondstadt characters use polearms. As to why Milleveth soldiers only use White Tassel or Halberd is because it has a long history with them. They describe the White Tassel as a weapon that has stood the test of countless bloody battles over centuries of history. For even when the smoke of the battlefield stained the tassel a murky shade of grey, it would wave proudly and defiantly like a flag in the wind. As for the Halberd, it is a powerful weapon even in the hands of the unskilled, because the longer, the mightier. The axe-mounted polearm the Halberd is preferred by warriors of great strength. It has also come to symbolize the honor and bravery of Milleth officers. Though peace prevails in the Liwe Harbor today, the sight of brave warriors with halberd in hand is a ubiquitous one on the city streets. This weapon is also only obtained through chests and not on gacha, so before you use this in enhancing some of your 4-star weapons, give it a consideration because you might not get this type of weapon again. Now that concludes the story behind the tenacity of the Milanus set. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching and if you hung around till the end and think it deserves one, give the video a like. If you want more videos like this in the future, considering subscribing to be notified for more videos on Genshin Impact lore. Once again, I'm Clementine and I'll see you again in the next one.